this episode, we look at Python. This is not a course on learning Python, but a course on how to use Python on your Raspberry Pi. There are plenty of excellent learning resources elsewhere on the web, so here we want to make sure that you have control of Python on your Pi as your own learning platform. On completion, you should have a thorough understanding of how to enter and run Python programs in both text and graphical modes. Let's first enter the Raspberry Pi in our usual cavalier manner as root in text mode. Change to directory slash user slash bin. Now start nano and enter the following exactly as seen here. Don't worry about the contents at the moment. We'll come back to this in a moment. This is your first program, so save it by pressing Control O, save it as any name in lowercase, with underscores replacing spaces, and add the extension .py to identify it as a Python program as opposed to PHP or HTML or TXT, as used in previous videos. I'm going to name mine hello underscore welcome .py. Exit nano with Control X and have a quick look to see the file has been written. And there it is, so let's run it. It's been saved in the currently selected directory, so just type hello underscore welcome dot py or dot slash hello underscore welcome dot py. But there's a problem, permission denied. Linux is telling us that we don't have permission to run our own file. Here's the first catch. Remember back to file permissions. Looking at our hello underscore welcome dot py file here, it shows that we, as root, can read and write, and our group and the rest of the world can only read. Nobody can run or execute this file. So let's make a change. Chamod plus x hello underscore welcome dot py. And there the flag has changed. X is for user root, group root, and the whole world can now run this program. So it is hello underscore world dot py. It prints hello world, asks me my name, and when I press enter, replies with my name. How satisfying. It then displays the Linux prompt to say that it's completed. Looking back at the original program, we can see how this behavior came about. Here is the simple print hello world command, traditionally the first thing you do in a new language. Next, here, I've generated a variable. I could have used any term, but chose to use the descriptive term username and made it equal to raw input. This is how Python asks for my name, but before doing it, it printed the contents of these parentheses. What is your name? Note the space at the end of this question. Why is it there? The final line here prints the contents of the speech marks and the contents of the variable username. This is only a simple program, but we could use nano to edit it again and add a few comments. Lines that begin with this sharp sign are comments and are for human consumption only. Python ignores these lines and jumps to the next command. I can add some useful comments for others, or even myself for in a few months' time, to explain my thinking in writing this program. Well-commented scripts are a sign of good programming. Finally, this top line. This is a special line that has to be at the top of the program before any other line. The combination of the sharp sign and the exclamation mark, sometimes pronounced bang, is pronounced together shebang. It isn't strictly necessary here, but it explains to the operating system where to look for the Python program to run this program. It's good practice to include, so include it by default. With this line included, I could resave the file as just hello underscore world without the .py extension, and the operating system would then be able to run it as a standalone Python program. So let's save this and exit nano. One last point that goes back to the file structure and the location of Python and the programs you write. At the moment, everything is simple. We are currently in the directory slash user slash bin. The Pi is set up by default to understand that scripts can be run here. The shebang line explains to the operating system that hello underscore welcome is to be run by Python and where Python can be found. We may want to relocate hello underscore welcome dot py anywhere in the system. Then the program can be run anywhere by typing its full absolute address or the relative address from where you're currently located. This is revision back to the Linux administration video. If you've been following previous videos and are running a web server, you could save your scripts in the slash var slash www subdirectory. Your friends can then use their browsers to see and copy your code. 
Python also offers a quick and dirty method of accessing it, but the prompt type Python. This opens what is known as the Python shell, and you can try Python commands here in what is known as the immediate mode. To prove that you're in the shell, the prompt changes to the three greater than signs here, showing that Pi is waiting for you to enter something. It can be used as a calculator, or you can test program lines one by one. Have a play, but notice the printout here when you enter the shell. Your Pi may well be updated to a later version of Python. Here, mine is version 2.73, release candidate 2. Yours will hopefully be a later version. Notice the comment here to enter quit with the brackets to end the shell. Time does not stand still and neither does Python development. The latest version of Python is version 3, which you can enter by typing Python 3. Try to use Python 3 wherever possible, but as we will see in a moment, there is still a good deal of old or legacy version 2 programs out there that have yet to be updated. Entering programs by hand is a good discipline, but to save you time, you could grab pre-written examples. At the prompt, enter this. Whoosh! And wget has downloaded another Python program here from wiley.com, the publisher. Go to this site, as it is a reference to the excellent Raspberry Pi user guide. Here, we've downloaded raspberrysnake.py, so let's inspect it. As we scan down this Python program, you should notice how the lines are not all in a single column, but are indented. These indentations are important to Python, as we'll see later. Control X to exit. Don't change anything at the moment. And now let's go all GUI. Oh. GUI is spelt G-U-I and stands for Graphical User Interface. We can swap to this mode from the text mode by typing start X. Here is the GUI. It's the prettier interface to the Pi. Click start. Programming and Idle 3. In time, windows open. I've increased the speed of response for this video. Idle is what is known as an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. It helps you develop Python code in this instance. The Python shell seen in text mode opens here with its familiar triple greater than prompt. Now let's open the Raspberry Snake file that we just downloaded. File, open and select raspberrysnake.py. This window is the editing window and the equivalent of Nano, but it should be obvious that it's more graphically appealing. The coloured text is not random, but is known as syntax highlighting. The editor is automatically highlighting important parts of the Python code for you. It's a convenient function and will operate as you delete and type in new lines. To run this code, click Run, Run Module, or use the F5 key directly. It's always annoying when things fail. As we said earlier, in Python we're in a transition at the moment with version 2.7 and version 3 of Pi available on the standard distribution of your Pi. One quick fix is to close all the windows and restart the program in the alternative idle or idle 3 program depending on the one you've been using. This is the option for running Python 2 or Python 3 on your Pi. In this example, Python 3 cannot find the module Pi game. If modules are missing, then one option is to enter the root terminal and enter apt-get install pygame. At the time of recording, there's no easy way of getting pygame for Python 3, so anticipate disappointment. Errors appear in the Python shell window, and it's your first port of call when things go wrong. The missing module can be a common problem, but once solved for one program will be solved for all. If the error is a typing or a syntax problem, then the IDE will mark the location of the error with a red block such as this. Edit the script, resave and rerun. In fact, the IDE will prompt you to resave before you can run the program anyway. Debugging code can be really frustrating. Simple items such as incorrect idents or missing colons soon ensure that you tighten up your inspection of what you type or cause you to leave programming for a real life. Watch for the red marker. Its location is a best guess to find the problem. But sometimes you have to look at an adjacent command. This way, madness lies. Another advantage of the graphical interface is the ability to run several sessions at a time. File, new window, allows you to enter a new program. Sometimes re-entering a program is a remedy for a persistent, undetected problem. Have a play and good luck. In this introduction to running Python and Pi, we've used the text editor, Nano, to enter and save a small Python program and seen how to change the permissions to allow it to be executed or run. 
By typing Python or Python 3 at the Linux prompt, we have seen how to use the Python shell and access it in the immediate mode. The shebang line in the code informed the Pi where the Python program could be found, and advice was given on how to store and run a program from anywhere in the file structure, although organization is a virtue. Switching to the GUI, we have entered the IDE, Integrated Development Environment, and seen the same Python shell in operation. Automatic syntax colouring and idents makes development simpler, and multiple windows allows for development of more than one program at a time. 